Hey everyone, it's Nicole from KenHub and welcome to our tutorial on the sphenoid bone. In this video, we're going to be looking at the sphenoid bone and all of its bony features. To get a good understanding of the sphenoid bone, we'll first look at the sphenoid bone as a whole. Then we'll look at the four main parts of the sphenoid bone, which include the body, the lesser wings, the greater wings, and the pterygoid processes. When we look at each of these parts, we'll go into a little bit more detail and we'll look at the bony features that we can find in each of these parts of the sphenoid. The sphenoid bone is the most complex bone of the human body. Because of its shape, it's also known as the wasp bone. The sphenoid bone makes up most of the part of the middle part of the base of the skull, as we can see in this image here. And we're looking at the skull from an anterior view. And the teeth of the upper jaw, which we can see here, are at the anterior aspect, and all the parts highlighted in green are part of the sphenoid bone. From an internal aspect, the sphenoid bone contributes to the floor of both the anterior and middle cranial fossae. And in this image, we're looking at the skull from a superior view, where the calvaria, or the skull cap, has been removed. In this image, we're looking at a sagittal section of the skull, and we can see the left half of the sphenoid bone highlighted in green. All these images we've looked at so far show us how far the sphenoid bone reaches in all directions. And as you can see, there's a lot going on. In this tutorial, we'll break it down and isolate each of the important features that this wasp bone has. As I mentioned earlier, there are four main parts to the sphenoid bone. And in this anterior view of the sphenoid, we can see the body highlighted in green in the middle, the lesser wings, which are highlighted now, and they project laterally from the superior aspect of the body. And now we can see the larger greater wings, highlighted in green, making up the most lateral part of the sphenoid bone. And finally, the pterygoid processes are what we can now see highlighted in green. And these processes project inferiorly from the body. Throughout this tutorial, we'll first look at the specific bony features on each of these parts of the sphenoid bone. We'll then look at these features in an image of the skull to see their relationship to other bones and features of the skull. So we're going to start by looking at the bony features of the body of the sphenoid bone. And here we see the body of the sphenoid bone from an anterior view on the left and from a posterior view on the right. And the body is the most centrally positioned portion of the sphenoid bone. Anteriorly, it contributes to the nasal cavity, while laterally it builds the medial wall of the optic canal. In this superior view of the cranial fossa, we can see where the body of the sphenoid bone is in relation to the other bones. So anteriorly, it articulates with the ethmoid bone in the midline and the frontal bone laterally, while posteriorly, it articulates with the clivus of the occipital bone. And from this view, we can also see some bony features that are part of the body. This highlighted depression in the middle of the superior aspect of the body is called the cella tersica. And the name cella tersica means Turkish saddle in Latin. And we can see in this image the saddle-shaped depression that we're talking about. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website. Not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.